seven. I'm Jason Gilbo, J Gilbo eleven. With me is Justin Elick at Big Italy forty two. You took a look at four stacks this week. Uh, hard not to like this first one here. Obviously, the highest team total of we think believe the season. Yeah, I, I think that if I remember right, the last thirty plus total that I saw was the Patriots last year. I think it was against the Browns. It was Could the have Patriots been a Colts. It might have been the Colts, but I want to say their total was like 30.75 or something, but I might be wrong. So if you know of one that's higher, then definitely call us out on that because I just don't remember one being higher than this this year. But either way, Matt Ryan, MVP Matt Ryan, as he looks right now, it looks incredible. Um, Julio Jones obviously playing really well. We know the kind of upside that Devontae Freeman has. I mean, you could even throw Tevin Coleman in if you wanted. I mean, I think I'll stick with Freeman because he's he's – to me has more upside and is going to get more guaranteed touches. But I mean, it's kind of an obvious stat because I think Ryan Jones is going to be popular even in cash games. So, you know, you're not surprised anybody with that. Freeman, I think will have low ownership because there's so many value plays you could put in at running back. And then Sanu provided that he plays, he's been a little banged up, missed some practice this week. Um, you could pair him if you're going full stack with the top two guys or, Maybe go contrarian and go Ryan, Freeman, and Sanu. Maybe you see Sanu and Freeman take the touchdowns and Jones gets the yardage. Um, a lot of ways you can go and a lot of guys that you really feel like you want a piece of here. And, you know, I I, I would, was going to include tight end in here, but, I mean, there's just – there's a lot to go around, but I just don't see a lot of upside at that position here. Yeah, I don't really – I think this is the pretty much the four and, and even five if you want to toss in Coleman if you want to go that route. Um, but I'm in agreement. I think this is the one where you can go with. And so new, obviously, you have as your kind of estimated lowest ownership guy who I think is probably the best swerve if you are making that Falcon stack and you still want to be different. Yeah, I mean, he's like half less than half of the price of Julio Jones on DraftKings, 4,800 less and 3,600 less on FanDuel. So definitely a nice swerve off of him. Yeah. Uh, look at the the top stack number two for you Patriots at Steelers obviously another high team total going up against the Steelers defense that's been pretty lackluster uh, over the last few weeks yeah I mean this is this is a spot where if Roethlisberger was playing I kind of mentioned in the article here that I would rather have James White than LeGarrette Blunt, but I'm, I'm of the belief that the Patriots are going to get up big in this one fourth quarter I won't say out of reach I'm not saying it's going to be the type of game that the Steelers put up against the Dolphins or the Eagles, but I do think that the Patriots are going to win this one pretty handily. Um, Steelers defense is not good. Patriots offense is just unbelievable right now. And I, I kind of intentionally left out the wide receivers because none of them have really been consistent at all. You know, Edelman hasn't really had a big game yet. Isn't much of a, a red zone threat or a deep threat. You had Amendola every once in a while, scores a touchdown. Chris Hogan's a guy that people like, but one catch last week. So this one's pretty simple for me. I mean, it's Brady and Gronk. Um, who Gronk in 12 catches has almost 300 yards in the last two weeks. It's, it's just insane. And um, so I, it's those guys. And I think if you think the game's going to stay close, throw in James White, who certainly um, has upside. I'm not expecting him to catch two touchdown passes again anytime soon, like he did last week. But um, if you do think the Patriots win big, I definitely think that Blunt is, is the way to go because he's the one that's with guaranteed touches. And he's the one that's going to be on the field in the fourth quarter if they're out big. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is, you know, trying to always dictate the running back situation for New England has been the toughest thing to do over the last few seasons. Um, and you're getting them at a pretty decent price tag. Obviously, White on, on FanDuel is a little bit cheaper than Blunt is, but um, DraftKings, he got Blunt at a pretty reasonable price. Gronkowski is also a guy who's historically killed the Steelers. I mean, yeah, over he's his historically time. killed anybody who wanted to kill. <laughs> I mean, he he looks like Pete Gronk right now. I mean, watching him last week, obviously the Bengals kind of fell apart in that game, but I mean, you couldn't tackle him. Once once he gets the ball in the open field, I mean, he's probably the toughest guy to tackle. And then you throw in Garrett Blunt, one of the toughest running backs, maybe the toughest running back size wise to bring down. I mean, you just keep feeding these two guys the ball, and this isn't a Steelers defense that's been particularly good at um, finishing tackles this season. So uh, it's just it's a great spot. I mean, but every, everyone knows that it's just finding like you said finding the right running backs because that brady gronk play is kind of i wouldn't say no-brainer but you're not surprised anybody with that no i don't think so either. especially with the value at running back opening up that forced a little bit of ownership on gronk this week because now you kind of have a little bit of luxury to pay that way yeah and his price definitely jumped up especially on FanDuel. yeah the, yeah he's up there i mean he's what same price as aj green so <laughs> yeah 8500 i mean he's and especially with uh no jordan reed he's now almost two thousand dollars more than any tight end 
Yeah. But might well be worth it this week. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of Jordan Reed here, we go into the value stack. Jordan Reed is ruled out. Um, so that puts Vernon Davis in play at, at a punt price uh, on both sites. And Deshaun Jackson questionable as well. So we already looking at a pretty cheap stack that just got uh, cheaper. Yeah, I mean, we know the Lions defense, not not a good one. 31, 31st, 31th, the 31th against the pass. 31. 30, <laughs> 31st against the pass, 26th against the run. Um, Redskins, an offense that, you know, without those two guys, obviously you said Reed is officially out now. Deshaun Jackson, I don't think he practiced. I know he didn't practice on Thursday, and he looks – questionable at best to suit up for this one so Pierre Garçon a guy who's been good over the past couple weeks anyway I think he's gonna be a fairly popular play at DraftKings at 3700 I mean that's an insane price especially if those two are out I don't see how you fade him in cash games so his ownership will probably be a little bit higher than that 10 to 15 that I mentioned here on DraftKings but you know Kirk Cousins facing off against that Lions defense that has just not been very good at all um 5900 for him on DK even at FanDuel price not bad and then Matt Jones not much of a volume back. Um, only more than seven. Only has had more than seventeen carries once this year. Um, but last week, huge game, over one hundred thirty yards and a touchdown. Lions defensive front doesn't look particularly intimidating right now either. So I think that this is a spot where you can get your cheap, not quite as cheap as the Bears were a couple weeks ago, but you can get this cheap stack and put, fit in a couple of big wide receivers with them. Yeah, you definitely can. Uh, looking at the contrarian stack here, you're going with the Titans. Uh, some of these guys will carry some ownership, but you're looking to really make a couple of pivots, more so with pairing um, guys with Mariota this week because I think people are kind of burned off of Delaney Walker, Kendall Wright. I still don't think people will really believe in him, so that ownership's going to be down, but great spot for all these guys. Yeah, I mean, like we mentioned in the other podcast, Murray probably will be the highest on running back this week, and he should be. I mean, he's in the best matchup. He's been probably the most consistent back in football so far this year. So obviously that's not sneaking up on anybody, but you're paying a pretty price for him. Mariota guy who over the past two weeks looks like, you know, Oregon Ducks Mariota. He looks just tremendous. Now he gets an easier matchup than he's seen over the past two weeks. So, well, at least as easy, I guess he did have the Browns one of those weeks, but um, still, I mean, he looks really, really good right now. Like you mentioned with Delaney Walker, there's a lot of value and Gronk. So I think that most of the ownership is going to go to the guys like Vernon Davis for cheap or Gronkowski for expensive. So he's going to have a little bit lower ownership and, you know, Kendall Wright, we mentioned him in the, uh, the FanDuel pot. He's got it's cheap, got nine looks last week. And you know, the, you expect the, score, the Colts to score some points here too. So it won't be a situation. Shouldn't be a situation like it was last week against the Browns where, you know, you're up big and you're just trying to hold on. They're going to need to keep trying to score. And so there's really no one else in that passing attack that has emerged as reliable weapons. So I'm kind of hoping that this is the start of something consistent here for Kendall. Kind of... Yeah, I mean, finally, I mean, we've kind of yet to really see him emerge as, as a threat. I mean, with pretty much anyone that's coming as a wide receiver for Tennessee, we haven't seen anything um, be really consistent. So I think people are obviously going to be scared of that. Even after the big game, usually we see some recency bias. I don't think that'll be the case with them. No, no, I don't. So that's going to wrap it up for this week's stacking to win it for week seven. Be sure to head on over to dailyfantasycafe.com, check out our great tools and content.